Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're basically going to talk about how the guitar went from where it was last time, aka unpainted, just green filled, to uh, where it is now. Fully sealed and with a nice amber hue to it. So, let's check out how we did this. So as we kind of jump back in time here to pre-paint, uh, you can immediately see how much different this looks, how pale the top looks in comparison. And some people like this look. Uh, I certainly don't mind it, but what we end up with at the end of this, as you've seen, is a cool vintage amber. So let's talk about how we're going to get that. First off, I want to mask off this area where the fretboard goes because I'm going to be gluing to it and we can't have paint underneath our glue. Uh, it'll mess up how strong the joint is. So I'm using tape as kind of a mapping item there so that I don't have to draw all over my guitar. And then that creates my outside line and I mask on the inside of that. And I'm using some painter's tape for the masking. Uh, the green stuff because it doesn't stick quite as hard so that way it'll be easier to pull off and it won't hopefully leave any residue that's kind of the point of painters tape is avoiding the residue um, I'm trimming this off with a razor blade I don't want it to get in the way because I gotta mask this binding after well, I don't have to but I'm going to and I'm kinda of burnishing down the edges with the back of my hobby knife as I go to make sure that they're nice and clean uh, and so that I can avoid getting bleeding under them hopefully now masking up this glue area on the inside where the neck goes is a bit of a pain. It's not overly challenging, it's just a little time consuming and you've got to be careful about it. So I spend a few minutes doing that. We've sped that up to I think 400%, so four times speed because it took me a while. Now we get to mask the binding and this is the part that you all might be interested in because if you stick around long enough, you'll get to see me unmask it. That's right, tape pull. People seem to like that. Not sure why, but it's going to happen. So I'm using the quarter inch orange fine line tape for this. There is blue fine line tape that is not paper. It's more of a rubbery substance. This is the paper stuff.
So here's the, I guess, important part for, uh, well, for anybody wanting to do this, and for me, if you want to do this, because it really helps me out. If you are looking for the Oxford paints, you can get them at, uh, at oxfordsupply.ca, and you can, when you check out, let them know you heard about them through me. That helps me out. It helps me keep getting this stuff so that I can keep doing these videos for you. Or, if you want to grab them through Solo Music Gear, you can do that as well. The link is in the description, and it is an affiliate link. So if you use my link and buy anything from there, it helps me out as well. I get a, a small percentage of that, and I really appreciate it. Again, helps me keep making these videos. All of this painting has been uh, at real time, so I've sped up a little bit of the taping work, but not the painting, because I want people to see how quickly I apply these lacquers, these lacquer-type products. Uh, they dry really quick, and they go on really quick. And these Oxford cans put out a lot of material pretty fast, which is why I'm so fond of them. Um, but it means I can spray quickly like that. So keep that in mind. That's real-time speed for me. This is real-time sanding speed. Uh, nobody likes to watch sanding. A lot of people don't like to do sanding. So we're going to speed this up. But I'm sanding this entire guitar at 800 grit. So this is about a week later. Uh, after having done the painting, I've given that sanding sealer plenty of time to dry. A week is unnecessary. Here we are, we're at 300% speed now.
And now we're back to the fan pattern so I can do another kind of even coat over top of it to dial back the contrast a little bit and make sure I've got everything as dark as I'd like it. For some reason I felt the need to take this down again to make sure I could inspect what it looked like. Did another coat on everything and here's what we end up with. A beautiful amber tint. Uh, you can see how it's lighter in the center and it's kind of darker looking more aged towards the outsides. Exactly what I was going for. So I'm very happy with how that looks. Uh, hopefully you guys are too. And you'll see it kind of outside of the harsh light of this spray booth. But big thank you to Oxford Supply for sending me that vintage amber. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. So you've stuck around long enough. Here's your reward. Oh yeah, tape pull. Uh, I, I still don't really understand why people like this, but apparently they do. Hopefully I'm not ruining it by talking through it. So this tape is good stuff, comes off pretty easily. Sometimes it'll break, but uh, I wouldn't dare show you that in a video. And there we have it. Peel that off and then next step will be scraping that binding. Looking good. All right guys, that is it for this one. So in our next video, we'll get this binding cleaned up. We'll get it abraded, ready to go for clear coat and we'll get working on the clear coat. And then after that, uh, yeah, we'll get the neck glued in and then finally polish it. So, well, and then do some modifications to it. There's lots left to do. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of how this turns out. If you're looking for the kit, solo music gear link in the description. If you're looking for the paint, same deal. Thanks again. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.